everybody, and welcome to the first edition of Post Pro Res for the year 2021. And here I am re- reunited with W.H. Park, who has flown all the way over here to Canada just for this show and for this site. Thank you, W.H., and welcome to the new year. I feel this uh, this joke has run its course, John. No, we're going to keep running it until uh, un- until it really sinks in with everybody that you have uh, officially moved. Well, I mean, I, I did see you in person two days ago. Does that mean we have to? Uh, we can officially end the facade of you and I being at any kind of distance. Now we have officially met. Uh, you gave me two very nice magazine gifts. I appreciate that very much. Well, I mean, we we were socially distant. We were very responsible in our in our meeting. We were outside. It was very cold. Yep. But yes, we were. I, I did enjoy seeing you in person again. Yeah, because now we're into another uh, lockdown here in Ontario. So we got one uh, socially distant visit in outdoors uh, a few days ago with Mike Murray, and now, and and now we're back to uh, I, I don't know what exactly all the the rules are, but they are uh, on paper clamping down now more significantly. Although I went for a walk today, and plenty seemed open. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm you know still working, so I don't know. <laughs> Well, we're we're going to talk about state of emergencies on this show, and we have lots to discuss, lots of stuff to catch up on. We're going to go uh, across the promotional map in Japan, and we're going to start with New Japan because I want to get some of your thoughts. Uh, we're not going to do any kind of in-depth look back at Wrestle Kingdom, but uh, just – uh, some of the Coles notes, WH, your highs and lows of the two-night Wrestle Kingdom 15 uh, event. And off the top, did you think the two nights worked this year? Um, no, honestly. Like, I I thought both nights had a lot to be desired. There were, like, maybe two good matches on each night that I enjoyed, and then everything else was just filler to me. And, like, to me, I'm looking at like this King of Pro Wrestling thing, the the New Japan Rambo thing, and I'm just like, why you couldn't get like Tomohiro Ishii, Minoru Suzuki, Sho Tanaka on the main shows, but you, you you get this, especially night two, they have that opening match with you know Fale, Chase Owens, Bushi, and and um, Toriano, and it's mm-hmm. like we're we're the good people, we're we're the people I actually want to see. Like, why are we doing this comedy gimmick on the main show? Like. Are you serious? Like you, you couldn't. And why is El Fantasma fighting Hiro Takashi when Show Show was like k- killing it like the whole year during the pandemic and stuff? And like this, you know, they fly this guy in, go all the way, all the trouble, John, fly him in, get the testing done, put him in quarantine just so he can have a mediocre match with Hiro Takahashi, and then someone else could have had a way better match with this guy. And then I'm thinking, why is Master Wado? And Taguchi fighting for the tank straps could have been like you know Robbie Eagles maybe show teaming up with him and they could have had an awesome match like you know what I mean. But I will say Okada versus um, Osprey mm-hmm. very good match I really like that and I and I really loved I think my favorite match both nights was Shigeru Takagi versus Jeff Cobb and and I can't complain about those. I will say though John like I I was watching both nights and if you notice certain members of the Bullet Club. We're wearing white gear, you know, and I thought, you know, this is kind of a perfect metaphor for how 2020 went. So, like, you know, the start of the year, we were all in Tokyo. We were having fun. We were enjoying all the wrestling and the food. You, me, Wei, a bunch of our friends. That That's Jay White, you know, in, in white. He looks good. I, I got to say, Jay White looks good in, in white gear. And then, you know, we, we get into the pandemic. COVID starts coming along. And, and then we get to Tamatanga in his, you know in his haircut phase, his, his clean shaven phase. And I'm thinking, yeah, earlier was better. It's way better. And then we get progressively down to Chase Owens. The year turned to complete shit. So that's, that, that was my, one of my big takeaways from Wrestle Kingdom. Well, there you go. You could follow the Bullet Club aesthetic uh, as, a, as a roadmap for 2020. I didn't uh, – I, I, that is definitely a WH Park guide to 2020 through the, yeah. the look of various Bullet Club members. Jay White uh, to Chase Owens. <laughs> In terms of uh, Kota Bushi's uh, two night performances, and this being really these two nights about establishing him as the flag bearer for New Japan, how did you think that came across? And and going with Kota Bushi, what do you see for the year ahead with Ibushi? 
I, 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 I was predicting this all along because, like, it's a redemption story. Like, he had to redeem himself from, from last year's Wrestle Kingdom and from the G1 this year, like, losing the, the briefcase to Jay White. So I thought it was fine. Um, I, I was a, much more of a fan of the, the Naito match than I was with the, the Jay White match. Um, but this is his year to be, like, firmly established as a main event guy. Like, he's never been given the ball in, in the company to this extent and it'll be interesting to see if they want to throw some roadblocks in his way like they did with Naito and in evil in the the middle of this year this past year i want to see like who's going to step up to Ibushi and is he going to have a long reign or is he going to have some hiccups along the way and like hold the belt two times because i i do think he has to join that pantheon with like the okadas and the naitos and the the tanahashis even but he needs to have like a long reign for that to happen. Yeah. Who are you looking at? Like, obviously we're going to get Sonata right out of the gate uh, in Hiroshima next month, but then, you know, we have the announcement of the new Japan cup that should produce, I would say like a pretty significant challenger for him. I think that you're looking this year at, you know, I'm, I'm sure evil will find his way back into that with, with a title challenge at some point this year, but you have the partners in Tanahashi. You have the inevitable rematch with Okada I think I think there's a lot on hand for Abushi this year, and I could certainly see him holding this the whole year. I, I think New Japan Cup is gonna produce either my prediction for that top of my head is either Osprey or it's Tanahashi. Yeah, and they win Osprey it and in there and, too. Yeah, and they're gonna one of them's gonna challenge him for the belt stemming from winning the uh, New Japan Cup. I think it came off really well. Like I think that like, there's a lot of of energy behind New Japan with, with Kota Ibushi in this role. Uh, it's it's a curious decision going with Sonata in this role that it just feels he has, you know, come up short one too many times that this feels almost overkill to do it again next month. Like, where where do you see Sonata in the decision to make him the immediate challenger in February? I, I think it shows where they've slotted him, to be honest with you. I think they've made their decision about him that – He's going to be the you know perennial challenger. He's he's r- unlikely to ever hold that belt. I I don't see where he's done anything to warrant being elevated to like championship level to main event main event level um, and carrying the company even for like a month or two. Um, I didn't see that with Evo. And I think that was a failed experiment. I, I think Sonata would be a failed experiment just because, and I think he knows this and he works to that level and that that's very common in, in new japan you you'll find certain people work to their push and and that's it and they don't they don't do anything beyond that except in certain occasions um it's it, i said i feel sad saying that john because i've liked sonata for a long time like since his time in all japan and then when he was in um russell one when that company formed and then when he joined new japan i was very excited about his prospects and company. I thought his first two years, he, he looked really good. Yeah. I can't, I can't say that it would have been a different outcome if they had gone the Sonata route instead of evil last year. But I think like their positioning on, on Wrestle Kingdom this year, I think that tells you like at the end of this whole thing with evil, uh, there he is at the dome wrestling with Sonata. Sonata goes over and you know, they new Japan is not one to, you know, put that rocket on a guy and give up. So I don't see them just discarding evil this year. I think he will get his chances once again, but I'm not disagreeing with you. Like that was, I would, I would argue like of in terms of elevation, like, yes, you had the backstory of, of, of Abushi, but Abushi was there. Evil was the one that had the greatest elevation in 2020. And it, and it didn't take, I think that that was pretty clear by, by the end of the year, like it did not take, and I'm interested to see what, it, how they reposition him this year because I'd, I'd be surprised if they just kind of discard him back into a mid card role without another chance at at the top. I also think we have to look at Hiromu Takahashi. I think he's going to be positioned in 2021 to have a major story and and a major elevation out of the junior heavyweight division and into the heavyweight division. Before as maybe a headliner, be, like that, yeah. that clearly is the goal for next year. And I think the fact that you're getting these back to back nights in Hiroshima, and you know, the first night, it's it's Sho and Hiromu in the main event. I think that's a, a very big sign of what they want this junior heavyweight championship to be. 
I mean, so I made an event of like night two of Wrestle Kingdom. I, I thought that was that's the highest the junior heavyweight title has ever been placed in New Japan. So like it's significant. And I think he's very likely going to be I definitely think he's going to be in the, in the New Japan Cup again. I And I and I'm going to put money on that. He's going to be in the G1 this year, John. I think that would make a, a lot of sense this year. I think when you look at is Darth Vader joining us as well? Oh, sorry. It's the plumbing in the house. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, I think uh, Hiromu, it's certainly interesting to watch him with that championship this year. And conversely, like Shingo Takagi, I think feels like someone that is, you know, not, not a homegrown star, but nonetheless, someone that I think came out of Wrestle Kingdom, the hottest he's been in New Japan and is now poised for his biggest program to date uh, with Tanahashi coming up. I, I don't know, John. Like, I mean, he's one of my favorite wrestlers. He, he's ha- he has been since his Dragon Gate days, but... I kind of worry that he's going to be the new, you know, Tomohiro Ishii. Like, he's 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 one of our best workers. He's he's going to have a great match with everyone. But you know what? We don't we don't see him beyond you know certain level. Like, and that's the never level. And and I worry because I I do think he can kill it. If you, if you've ever been familiar with his stuff in Dragon Gate, he he could be an amazing top line heel because he's done it before too with like amazing results like. Like I'll point to his run as the leader of the the heel faction for Zerk in Dragon Gate. It's like one of my favorite periods of of uh, Shigo Takagi, and I think if you translate that into like New Japan, like if he's the leader of a faction, like a heel faction, it, you, much better than Evil, much better than Jay White in the Bullet Club. Like I, I'm definitely not on my own suggesting this. Everyone has, but the idea of looking back at 2020 and we had had three Naito Takagi matches throughout the year. And Takagi in that role, I think we're looking back at that uh, in a much different light. Oh, I mean, just on a work rate level, yeah, Takagi blows away most of the roster, in my opinion, and definitely blows away evil. So uh, coming out of Wrestle Kingdom, of course, there was the state of emergency that's been issued for uh, Tokyo, Saitama, Chiba, and Kanagawa. And the result of that has been not so much uh, a lot of promotions like stopping operations or anything but we are seeing uh, adjustments especially on this upcoming tour where it's a uh, uh, less matches we're looking at like five to six match shows from new japan uh they're they've bumped back the start time by a half hour for most you can still run events up to five thousand people or 50 percent capacity so not gigantic changes but they they have adjusted somewhat yeah i mean i i don't think these these changes really have any teeth. I mean, I, I look at, you know, here in Ontario, John, like nothing that the government does, whether it's the, the municipal government or the provincial government does, like in terms of measures, seems to be working. Like the numbers just keep going up. And I just see the same thing in, in Tokyo and the surrounding regions, because I think the one of the key things that they haven't done is let people work from home and they still have people traveling on the trains and you know like you've been there john you know like those trains can get crowded you know regardless of whether there's people going to work or not but even more so during like the the work week and then you know like people will still want to go out and stuff like that and i think that's one of the key things that that's caused the spread anywhere in the world what we haven't had yet is a a positive case on uh, on the new japan roster if that were to happen as a, as a hypothetical do you think that that shuts everything down for, for New Japan. Like, what do you think the response would be like? Because thus far, they, they have operated without a without a positive uh, test. Well, that we know of, John. I mean, like, if there's any place that you can probably keep that a secret, it's probably Japan. Um, they're, they're pretty, like, you know, stringent about privacy, I think, in hospitals. And as well, like, you, you, you can keep things kayfabe over in Japan a lot easier than you can in the United States, I feel. Um if there's a public acknowledgement of someone having COVID on the New Japan roster, like depends on who it is, John. Like honestly, if it's if it's one of the young boys, it's it's not as big of a deal as if it was like say you know Tanahashi or Akata. That would that would be a big deal. I think that would be like really embarrassing for the company. But say it's like uh, you know just let's say it's Bushi for for example. No, they they won't won't be that big of a deal. But it's Naito, yeah, it's a lot more significant. So looking ahead, it's. It's a really packed calendar for New Japan beyond the three new beginning cards where we have uh, the the main events uh, 
I guess Nagoya is the first one coming up at, at the end of the month on January the 30th, as I'm uh, just looking at the cards here. That will be the Shingo Takagi Hiroshi Tanahashi headlined show along with us. Satoshi Kojima, Will Ospreay, and Hiroyoshi Tenzon against a great Okan. That's going to be the great experiment, that match. Well, what is that going to look like? Uh, it's a battle of the Mongolian chops, John. I, come on, you're not excited about that? Woo. I will be watching uh, of the our, our our third of five matches on on the thirtieth, and then there are back to back nights in Hiroshima, the eleventh and twelfth. But it doesn't stop there. After the New Beginning tour, they've got back to back nights at Osaka Joe Hall at the end of February. Then the anniversary card at Budokan Hall, March fourth. And then the next day is the start of the New Japan Cup on the 5th that runs until March 22nd. So this is a packed couple of months to start the year for New Japan. And, uh, you know, it will be limited capacity, but nonetheless, still larger venues that they're running and will require, you know, significant main events for some of these shows in the next few months. I mean, I think all these shows are pretty much sold out. So (laughs) there's no concern among the fans to to attend these shows, John. Well, what is – Osaka Joe Hall would be roughly how many at like half capacity? What are we talking about? Uh, Seven? Six? I think I say seven at half. Jeez. That's – if they're sold out both nights, that's that's very impressive this this far out without a card. Well, I mean Osaka – I mean I've said this tons of times. Osaka is a hotbed. For New Japan fandom, like those people in Osaka, they fucking love their New Japan more than any other pro wrestling company in the country. So yeah, they're they're pretty hardcore, John, and they're and they're drawing from like Kobe and and Kyoto and other places in the Hyogo, um, you know, Kansai region. So it's it's a lot of people who look at the Osaka shows as like a big deal. I mean, these are it's one of their major markets that Yokohama and Tokyo are like I would say the three biggest markets for New Japan. So like they're going to draw people from like all around the surrounding region. What, what stands out to you of the of the main events that we have uh, on on these new beginning cards? What are you looking forward to? Honestly, like the the Tanahashi Shingo, that to me is like a dream match. But beyond that, like honestly, it's it's Hiromu versus Show. Like these guys have awesome chemistry, and I, I just feel like twenty twenty one. Like you know, I'm a big Show Tanaka fan. To me, it's like this year. Come on, he's got to do it. He's got to. He's gonna get put over by Hiromu. Hiromu's gonna, you know, gracefully leave the junior heavyweight division, move to the heavyweight division, and then we're gonna get the era of Show as as the junior heavyweight icon in the company, John. I, I'm, I'm all excited for that. He d- he then needs to turn and uh, acquire a manager. Uh, no, we, we can skip that part. But, but John, also, there, you know, you know, there's an eight-man tag between Dauki, El Desperado, Muro Suzuki, and Yoshinobu, Yoshinobu Kanemaru taking on El Fantasmo, Ghetto, Jado, and Taichi Shimori. This, this match is happening five fucking times on the New Beginning Tour. Three times in a row at Corkin in the number two match slot. Unbelievable. I, I, the, the booking genius that requ- that this required, like I don't know how they, how Ghetto like figured it out. How, uh, let's just have the same fucking match five times on the tour. So really? ne- ne- next month we're gonna rank them from uh, one through five. <laughs> What's the best right. version of the eight man tag? You know what? Out of sheer curiosity, let's do that. I'm gonna watch all five. And then we'll pick which one's the best one. I would love if they just like you know the like the the WWF house show they just like pl- just cookie cutter every single night and see if everyone, anyone notices. But these are all going to be broadcast on New Japan World. Now. I know, I know. Them. Like, like let's see who's it. watching. Let's find out. Uh, you and I part. will be okay. We'll watch these ones. Okay. The 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 run of the five nights of this eight man tag. Uh, Finishing up on New Japan here, I know you want to talk a little bit about Jay White. Uh, I don't know what the the status of his contract is. Like we have we've heard the the report of it could be up. Um, Dave Meltzer noted last week that you know when when AEW was getting started, they were told by White that he had just signed a, a seven year deal. Uh, what do you think is the w- without um, lo- looking at you know whatever the status is? What do you think is like the ideal? scenario for jay white here because i think uh i don't know how much you enjoyed the uh, the second night main event but i just think jay white is coming out with so much momentum behind him um i would be very surprised that he's not continuing with new japan this year i i mean my personal feelings aside john i mean like 
yeah, I saw people raving about that match. I, I, I didn't really particularly enjoy it that much, to be honest with you. But, like, I understand why people like it. And I do think he got a little momentum. I thought he got even more momentum out of the, the backstage promo where people mm-hmm. were like, the way people were talking about it, I thought I was going to. And then I watched it after. I thought, oh, okay, it's going to see the wrestling equivalent of, like, fucking Daniel Day-Lewis and there will be blood. But, John, there was no drinking of a milkshake in this fucking promo. Just some emo boy crying about, like, he lost a match. Okay. But people thought it was a great performance. Okay, so but, you know, a lot of buzz out of that. I think he would be insane to leave. Honestly, I think it would be terrible for him, and I think it would be terrible for the company because, like, I think he's finally gotten out of the shadow of being placeholder Kenny. You know, like, that's what he was. When when Ken Chan left, he became placeholder Omega, and I think he finally escaped that sh- the shadow of being that. And, like, for him to up and leave and go, I don't know, either AEW or the WWE – who knows? Like, I, I don't think it's happening. I think it's all a work, John. Like, I think he's staying. And I think he's intelligent enough to think, I'm going to I'm gonna be a big star in this company. And I'm going to have a lot of freedom to have the kind of matches I want. And especially, I think, if he's slated to become a babyface, I think there's a point where he, like, the people who are doubters, like myself, would, might possibly come over and, and start supporting Jay White. I'm, and I'm sure Stephanie Chase will be very happy to hear that. Yes, I, I think I think she would as well. I think, you know, I I was like I looked at Jay White and I think it was remarkable that he is where he is now. When you look at what his 2019 was, like you say it facetiously about placeholder Kenny, like that was literally what he was. He was put into a position and he had to overcome that. And I think he did so. And it's it's not everyone's cup of tea, like his style. But I think that. I think you really got to see the the evolution of of this guy who, when he started as that Switchblade character, I mean, you talk about a fish out of water trying to become that Switchblade character. It was a very difficult fit for a, for a long time. When you go to that that first Dome show he did with Tanahashi to now, it's night and day. Uh, I think his uh, his attachment to New Japan, I just think it would be. In his best interest, the guy is 28. Um, if if he were fielding offers, like there will be a time that you can go and sign that that crazy deal. Um, I don't know if it would be now, and and I'm expecting him back. Uh, when the time's right. I mean, and John, if they, I mean, if the WWE is like, you know, parking up a, a fucking truck full of gold to his house, you know, wherever that is, you know, um, and he gets doesn't have to travel you know like back and forth because I, th- I do think he's staying in the united states like you know if he doesn't have to travel back and forth that's that's a big bonus too especially during this pandemic um also like you know i did see that you know they trademarked a bunch of new names including something called the the coveditator can you imagine jay white is the coveditator whatever the fuck that is that'd be awesome i would i'd be totally down for that that showing up forget nxt just put that on the main roster put it on raw have him feud with the fiend money uh so last thing here your prediction for the new japan cup is will osprey or tanahashi or tanahashi i like the tanahashi one i hope th- i i'm sure they will get to that match at some point and i guess they haven't explained like their calendar beyond that if they're going to do their sakura genesis card at, at the end of this whole thing i i would imagine that they're they're going to run osaka at, at the end of this for a big match and, and i think tanahashi would be tanahashi and, and osprey are great choices I want to see what they're going to do with the G1. Like, honestly, if they move it back to the, if they move it into the fall again, I mean, they're, they're planning on doing the Olympics still, so they're probably going to, right? I think that's a great idea. Move it permanently into the fall, John. It makes so much better sense booking wise. Yeah, I think that you really eliminated that lull this year. That is the, the gap between G1 and 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 the Tokyo Dome. Like, if I never have to see another destruction card, I will. I will not be complaining. Um, I think that you know, running it in the fall, it's to to me, just it, it fills out their calendar a lot better. They were able to run a, a giant stadium show in August in its place. Like there's there's definitely to me a lot of touring you can do in the summer, getting away from from Tokyo and going to different parts. And when traveling is uh, an option again, coming over to to the U.S. for a big show in the summer, I think like that would be. I thought it was a really smart play to try and piggyback off of SummerSlam weekend uh, before everything shut down. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think once things open up, once most of us are vaccinated, John, like 
it's, it's going to be crazy as far as the wrestling calendar goes, whether it's in Japan or, or in the United States. I mean, nothing's really stopped in Japan, so they're, they're doing fine, relatively speaking. I, I'm just curious to when, like, you know, the WWE is going to allow fans back into the buildings. That, that'll be really interesting. And, but when that happens and, and travel is, like, you know, more freer and, and, you know, people can travel back and forth with less restrictions... Yeah, I think we're going to see New Japan probably try to hop back into the into the American market again. Moving over to All Japan, uh, some highlights of uh, the earlier this month. Uh, we had uh, Suwama and Shuji Ishikawa dropping the tag titles to Kento Miyahara and Yuma Aoyagi, uh, with Aoyagi submitting Suwama. This on the eve of him challenging Suwama for the Triple Crown, uh, which Suwama retained and. Uh, a, a really enjoyable uh, Triple Crown match. And coming out of that, uh, our next defense will be January 24th at Core Kewen Hall with Suwama defending against Shotaro Ashino. That sounds great on paper. I mean, I, I love their first match, you know, and that was in front of no people. So they'll actually have fans and this will be in Korokin. So I, I think the atmosphere, even though there, it's a clap crowd, like I, I still think you can get really decent you know, atmosphere from from the Japanese fans with without having them be able to cheer. Um, I, I got to say that this is going to be Suwama's fifth defense of his current reign, and it's going to be you know Ashino's second time challenging Suwama. I I really think it's do or die for Ashino, and to me, it's so important for the company to make Ashino a main event guy in this company. He he's got to win this match because they are so desperately in need of someone to join Miyahara. In those ranks, I, you know, like, I think Zeus has lost a lot of things. I mean, he won the, the Champions Carnival, and then he lost his title challenge. I, I thought he was going to win that match, John. I thought he was going to be the next Triple Crown champion. I think, you know, him losing that match really hurt him, and I think it really hurt the, the All Japan roster. So, like, Ashino has to be the project. I think, you know, the thing with the, the title reign, the tag team title reign with Aoyagi and, and Miyahara, like, as next stream, this has to be, like, a long reign, in my opinion. I think Aoyagi really has to get the rub off being an equal to, to Kento Miyahara, not just being his his second, his like his partner. He has to be his equal in this in this team. And I think in a lot of their title offenses, and I hope it's a long reign, that he has to get most of the shine. Miyahara doesn't need to get the shine, right? He can, he can be the guy who gets all the heat put on him by the uh, opposite team. And then you know, Aoyagi gets the hot tag and, and cleans house on people, and he gets a lot of the wins instead of Miyahara because they – Miyahara is fine. He doesn't need protecting. You need to elevate Aoyagi. You need to elevate uh, Ashino, and you need to get the guys underneath them ready to to get up there. And who knows? Like, I'm hoping also this year we're going to get the return of Naoya Nomura, John. That would be so great for the mm-hmm. company. And, and, and me personally because I'm such a huge fan of that guy. They really need to address th- that gap. Like, it's – there's a big concentration on like the the over forty club. It's like Suwama and Ishikawa. It's like they they have their roles, but you're right. It's it's to me fortifying that that main event scene in addition to Miyahara. And I think that's I feel each year I, I've said that over and over. And this is another one where it's like you need to you know take you know three four guys and not all of them are going to make it, but make them your your projects this year. And if two make it, that's that's all the more better for your main event scene. That's, um, you know, Ishino winning winning this on the twenty fourth. I think would be uh, an interesting booking change to go with at the, this point and have someone fresh with the triple crown. And all of a sudden, it's the guy has the title and it's all fresh matches, even if they're you know redoing other matches. But as triple crown champion, they feel fresh. He has. I'm a huge fan of him because he has this aura about him, John. Like, he looks like a star and he carries himself like a star. And I think him with the Triple Crown title will do, like, wonders more for the company. I think it will really freshen up all Japan. And, like, you know, if you've ever seen him when he was the Russell 1 champion, like, he made that belt a lot more important than it actually was because of his aura. And he's he's just a star, John. And I, I just really feel really high on him that he should be the Triple Crown champion and that he'll – It'll be a nice boost for the company in terms of, you know, artistically and at the box office. What else are you uh, looking at for this uh, this core Q and show? We have uh, Koji Iwamoto defending the junior heavyweight title uh, against Fuminori Abe from Basara. Oh, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Funar Abe. You know, like, you know, the astronauts, John, his tag team with Takuya Nomura. You are so Kukutan. high on this team. Yes. I love this team. I, I've sent you links for, for some of their, like, some of their matches. I don't know if you've gotten around to seeing them, but I think once you start watching 
the astronauts defend the Big Japan Tag Team titles on a regular basis. John, you will you will join me on the astronauts rocket ship, and you know I have to catch up on those. Yeah, and then you're going to be like, WH, we, we need to get in on, like, getting some matching astronauts' T-shirts because they got some really sweet gear as well as far as the merch goes. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I think Abe and, and Iwamoto are just going to are gonna kill it. Abe's so good. Like, he, this guy is, like, really one of the most underrated, like, underappreciated, like, wrestlers out there because not, so many, not too many people know about him. If you watch, if you want to see him really smooth, you know, like, if you remember Minori Sawa, John, that, he's basically that guy's disciple. And he's basically a clone of him with without being a, you know, like without with also having his own unique style. But, yeah, that's going to be awesome. But I don't know, like, honestly, like, it's kind of a bit stale right now in all Japan. <laughs> I'm, I'm really hoping, like, the, the tag team titles and, and uh, you know, are going to be really freshened up with Next Dream being the champions. And, 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 you know, Ashino, hopefully, crossing my fingers, John, has said he's going to become the Triple Crown champion. And I just want to say one thing. Jun Kasai. I... Oh, fuck that shit. That's terrible. Like, Suwama has done an excellent job being the champion. I don't want to, like, people think that, that I, I don't appreciate his, his title reign this, this year. It's been awesome. Like, I think he's one of the most underappreciated, like, world champions in wrestling right now. And I, and I think he's had a tough job, you know, being the champion during, during the pandemic. But his, every time he goes in the ring to defend that Triple Crown, John, I, I love the match. So, like, I just want to say, it's not that I don't like Suwama. I just think for the overall health of the company, it's got to go on Ashino. No, like the, the Ao Yagi match was great, great match. Like he's he's fine as you know. If you need someone to to hold the title, he's just he's not your long term answer in 2021. No, no, that's. I really feel this is kind of a make or break year for for all Japan. I, I feel that way almost every year, but even more so now. Uh, I've been watching quite a lot of Noah lately, so uh, let, let's chat about this. Going back to January 4th, we had. The surprise appearance by Hiroshi Hase uh, as the mystery partner for Go Shiozaki and Kaito Kiyomiya as they defeated Keiji Muto, Naomichi Marufuji, and Masato Tanaka in the main event of the January 4th show at Core Q and Hall. I guess Muto uh, didn't want to be labeled the oldest man in this six-man tag. So uh, one year his senior, Hiroshi Hase, came in. And I've got to say, WH, this was an awesome match to set up the GHC title match I want to see, that is Go Shiozaki and Hiroshi Hase by the end. <laughs> That's the match I want to see. Instead, Go pins Mudo at the end of this, and your belief of what this leads to, I can't say I disagree. But this was a very, regardless, regardless of how they booked this Budokan main event, this was a very bizarre finish. And watching it, I was scratching my head that you had Go pin Mudo before the title match. Um... Well, I mean, I'm I'm always scratching my head at Osa Arangai's booking in this company. If you look at the junior scene in Noah, it's a complete mess. Like every show has almost like a turn and like double, like at least two double crosses in the junior division. Like people jumping factions and shit. So it's now kind of bled over into the into the main title picture. But I, I do think it it doesn't mean anything. I think it's like a you know it's a false flag, John. It's it's signaling the the inevitable you know, you know, win for Kishimoto, who, who has a big supporter, a big fan in No Sauerangai, who also happens to be pressing Noah's head booker. And, and I think it's, it's going to be, you know, Kishimoto getting the hat trick, John, IWGP heavyweight champion, all Japan, triple crown champion. Um, uh, he, and he's going to become the GHC, uh, you know, heavyweight champion as well. It's, he's going to be one of the three other, he's going to be one of three men who's, who's had that, He's had that title, like the the triple crown of the triple crowns, you know, like there's Takayama and then there's Kensuke Sasaki. And now we're going to have Keiji Muto. For all the uh, for all the shine we just gave Suwama, I mean, it goes tenfold for this reign that Go Shiozaki has had in 2020 as GHC champion. And yeah, I mean, the way this is set up, it's like Muto came in. He beat Kiyomiya and your theory that Muto wins this title at, at Budokan next month and then the long term is Kiyomiya getting the pin over Muto. Um, it, it, does the end justify the means if it's uh, Kiyomiya getting the big win over Muto? Which, if you are positioning this to be one big pinfall that Muto takes, again, the six-man tag, it was so stupidly booked in the end. No, Wouldn't because... you want to preserve that, like, that person that finally pins Muto as something? Like, what's the value here? 
it, <laughs> there's no value anymore, John. There's absolutely no value. The value is in beating Go and ending this legendary like title reign. It's one of the best ones. I'd say it's right up there with the epic Kenna Kobashi GHC title reign. Um, and he's done it during a pandemic. Like Joey Shiozaki is, you know, just one of the MVPs of this year. Not my overall MVP of, of 2020 in, in pro, pro wrestling in, in, in Japan, but like he's up there for sure. And I have a lot of respect for him. But he beat Kiyomiya for that title, and I think there would have been poetic. It would have been poetry if on this big return to Budokan, like which used to be like the homestead of Pro Wrestling Noah for their for their epic title matches. Um, that it should have been Kiyomiya, who's who's the guy, who's the next guy. Like he is the guy already in, in their eyes. I think that he beats goes go to regain the title that he lost to him. I think that'd be more poetic. And then if you you want him to have the rub of beating Muto, make it his first title defense. What's their harm in that? Like people will say to me, but but is it doesn't Muto have like this name value? Isn't he a draw? If he was a draw, John, Wrestle One would would still be around to some to some extent, you know? Yeah, it's. I mean, th- this match, it's its more so of the curiosity of what is Mudo able to do. This guy had double knee replacement surgery, uh, what, 2018 he had it? I, I think he's done that multiple times, John. I mean, it's its just like the, the guy is um, – I mean, this is more so like a science experiment next month at Budokan with Shiozaki and Mudo. But I, I, I look at your scenario and I very much can see that uh, playing itself out. Also on the January 4th show was a six-man with uh, Takeshi Sagira, Kazushi Sakuraba, and Kazunori Murakami, who has returned, defeating uh, Kano, Ketsuhiko Nakajima, and Masa Kitamiya, with Murakami choking out Kano. And do you want to just talk a bit about Murakami? Uh, you know, he had a serious, like, like brain injury, what, like 13 years ago? And, and what's – he's been pretty much off for the last three years. Yeah, I mean, he used to be – like part of like the the Enochism crew in New Japan, he was like involved in like MMA during the height of Pride and all this stuff, and is like one of the one of like Enoki's boys back in the early two thousands, and just a wild man, like one of the most intense brawlers you'll ever see in the history of wrestling, John. Like those of you who've, who've seen him work in the early two thousands, you'll know what I'm talking about. For those of you who haven't, I'm sure if you can find stuff on YouTube, like just YouTube this man, Kazunari Murakami. He he's he's like awesome, a brawler. crazy crazy brawler. I think he's I think I think he might have won Best Brawler in the Observer Awards a couple of years, you know, <laughs> in the early 2000s. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, again, like, you know, Nosawa Rangai thinks, like, you know, like, Pressing Noah is like an ATM for his his friends and people, like, he he worships in wrestling. Like, and Murakami's one of those guys. Like, for some reason, Rangai has, like, this fascination with all these, uh, you know, IGF guys, Inoki Genome Federation dudes, and, like, all the guys who are part of, like, the Inoki office back in the the, the dark days of New Japan. And, and I don't care what anyone else says. Oh, WH, that was actually good. No, it was complete fucking shit. Terrible booking and terrible matches. But anyways, um, no, like, th- I, I don't like this, to be honest with you. Good for him getting a payday, you know. But honestly, Kano should not be losing this belt to an old guy who's who doesn't eat, like the guy can't even bother to wear proper gear. John, he's wearing a suit. Yeah, he's shirt. wrestling in a suit. Um, I guess following in uh, the the pantheon of uh, past suit wearers like Loki. <laughs> sure, I think Loki. I give Loki some credit. I think he's a bit more mobile in his suit. Like to me, it looks like if like. You know, if like the Undertaker decided to like wrestle in a fucking tuxedo, this is what he would look like because you know he's got the MMA gloves. So that 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 makes all the difference, John. You just put on some MMA gloves. Doesn't matter if you're wearing like you know like a a blazer and some fucking dress pants. You're still a badass. Yeah. So he just choked out Keno here to send set up the uh, the title match for the the national championship on January 23rd, and then the Budokan show that's February the 12th, um, which will be on Fight TV. Um, which will have English commentary, I believe, uh, with Shiozaki and Mudo, uh, Marafuji and Junakiyama against uh, Kaito Kiyomiya and Yoshiki Inamura and Daisuke Harada versus Seiki Yoshioka for the junior heavyweight title. Those are the announced matches so far. I'm really big, big on this tag match, John. I think Marafuji, like when he's motivated, can have a good performance, and I think the same goes with with Furakiyama. I saw a recent match Akiyama had in the the finals of a of a tournament in in DDT against Kunosuke Takashita and that was fucking great and Akiyama was a large part of why it was great so those two motivated 
have a have a good performance. And I think they're going to be motivated to have a good match with these two guys. Kiyomiya is the next, you know, it's going to be the ace of this company. And Inamura is right on the tail. Like, he's still really young. He's still got to get a lot of seasoning in him. But it's obvious that they, they are very high on this guy. I think they look at him as being, like, the next like the next Morishima. Hopefully not with the same problems that Morishima had later in his career and his life. But, you know, like, this guy is going to be – they see star in this guy. And I've seen, like, him have these flourishes in, in some of the tag matches he's had in over the last year. And, like, John, once this guy figures it out mentally up in his up in his uh, – up in his brain, this guy's going to be like people are going to be talking about this dude. Uh, when's uh, Fujita going to get his run with the title this year? Uh, when he stops uh, staring at uh, his opponent across the ring, like yeah, Fujita. No, God, I I I never want to see this man in in a, in a six man tag, let alone with the title, John. What if it's a six second submission win against uh, Masao Inoue? Uh oh, God, don't bring up Masao Inoue. I, it pains me to hear that man's name too. Um, honestly, just get rid of all all the older people in the company. Seriously, Th- like, there's a lot of them on this roster, man. Like you look at this, <laughs> like like January fourth. I think it it shows you like like there's tons of gems on the Noah roster and a lot of good stuff. But you also like this is a company that's like it's tons of yeah you know, like Osamu Nishimura is wrestling on the Shiro Koshinako is on this January fourth show. So I think like you've you've kind of outlined it like there's a lot of great pieces to work with with noah but it's their their booking that is going to tell the tale this year well i mean i used to like bang on them for like trying to copy new japan but they don't except they don't copy them in the most important way and that's like new japan pushes their younger talents and that's what noah needs to do like i forget like the names you mentioned nishimura koshinaka they're they're just they're they're, you know they come in once in a while it's guys like muhammad yone it's guys like akatoshi saito it's guys like masue you know you know like you don't need these dudes like honestly like i'm not i'm not for one for like getting rid of people but you need to put them in like the the first or second match only and start pushing like all the guys underneath Kiyomiya, right? Like Inamur is one of them. Like, and, and like, you know, I, I don't know what they're doing in Nakajima. Like this is bizarre. Like he just seems to be in this holding pattern. I'm, I'm hoping there's a grand plan for him, but I don't trust no Ron guys booking to be honest with you, John. We'll see. Like, I think, you know, like one thing that you have to say about like, Noah is that, you know, Katsuhiko Nakajima has to be a big part of them going forward. Uh, he's still relatively young and in excellent shape, and and he doesn't have any lingering, uh, you know, injuries. And you got to de-emphasize, even Segura, like, that guy's a beast, but he, he's, he's like, oh, you see, he's hitting 52, I think. So at some point, like, yeah, the, the, the wheels are going to fall off that dude. And Marafuji is, like, really, you know, kind of hit and miss, you know, so... It's Kiyomiya, it's got to be Nakajima, you know, Go, Go's always bandaged up. Like, people think that's a work. I, I do think there's something to him being bandaged up all the time as well. So, we'll see. I, I do think it's going to be really interesting to see who gets the push in, in Noah these, in, in this year, John. It's also a very big year for stardom. They're running their 10th anniversary card in March at Budokan Hall. Uh, but before that, we there's a pretty big card coming up uh, this weekend uh, at Core q and Hall, which will be headlined by Utami Hayashishita and Micah for the World of Stardom title. And then Julia and Natsuko Tara for the Wonder of Stardom title. But this is a, this is a pretty loaded show coming up on Sunday. I mean, they also have two other... Um, singles titles matches they also have the uh the uh the high speed championship hold, held by azumi she's gonna fight uh kari yoyama which is it's nice to see it's not it's not her clown gimmick uh literally she, her her regular gimmick is she's a clown john like but she's gonna be kari yoyama for this match which i'm really excited to see uh, I think Yoyama is actually a very underrated, you know, veteran Yo- Joshi wrestler. And then uh, Saida, you know, she's going to defend her future of Stardom Championship against uh, Sayaka Unagi, who's, I think, one third of the uh, trios titles holders with, uh, who is it? It's uh, it's Tam Nakano. And who's their partner? Oh, it's uh, the girl from who jumped from Toshi Jokyo, uh, Mina uh, Shirakawa. Mina Shirakawa. So they're the trios title holders and you know, Unagi's going to have a chance against the future starting championship against Saida. So I, you know, like four singles titles, pretty big show, John. This is a very big show on, on Sunday. And, you know, they, 
It's it's sold out uh, at Court Cune Hall, and then they've got the, the Budokan show on March the 3rd. And uh, we haven't talked about it uh, on this show, but we did on the on the New Japan preview about uh, everything involving uh, Yoshiko and bringing her back in. Uh, how has this been met, and and what do you see as the as the goal here of uh, bringing her back and u- utilizing her on this Budokan Hall show? I mean, it's really a win-win. It's a win-win for Stardom. It's a win-win for uh, Seedring, which is like her home promotion. Um, I, I think you know there are people like me who are a little apprehensive about it i'm just apprehensive about yoshiko in general but i i'm i'm very much an outlier on this john like if you go into the you know into joshi wrestling twitter like most people are fine with her still being a wrestler and and are most people really really like her you know like they like her tiktok where she's baking shit it's she's very popular on that app and and like a lot of people like her wrestling and like i think she's you know really played up you know, the, the ugly incident with Act Jessikawa to her benefit. Um, but, you know, like, Bushiroad, like, ultimately made the decision, John. And they, they probably looked at it as like, like that, would, that would draw at, at Budokan. And, you know, like, Yoshiko against the icon of stardom, which is Mayu Iwatani. It's, there's a match there. Like, I, it, it's also like there's this idea that stardom wants to bring back a lot of their former, you know, stars. Like, Takumi Aroha was, like, you know, a couple mm-hmm. of really high-profile matches with Mayu yep. and last year. So that's kind of, I think that kind of signaled, like, okay, we're ready to bring back other people. Here's the other thing, John. Like, I, I think at some point you're probably going to see Act Yasakawa probably show up before this match and she might maybe she's going to be in the corner of my Utani. i'm not saying that's gonna, definitely going to happen but let me just say i won't be surprised if it does well that was going to be my next question of like how much do they lean into that versus it's more so implied the audience knows the history like does the stardom go and and kind of lean into that because that is where the like that's where the heat is essentially if they are able to bring act Yasakawa in for you know, promoting this match. Like right now she's like, she's an actress. Like, you know, she's not on television or anything like that, but like, I don't think she's really doing much where like, where she would be able to say no, if like, like Bushi wrote through some money at her, say, can you, do you want to be part of this angle? Show up at Budokan, be in Mayu's corner. We'll give you this much money. I, I would say probably she's, she'll likely say yes to that. And then like, if she gives her permission, like, okay, let's show the footage maybe. But then you get to think, well, we're gonna have we're gonna have to have a match between Akasakawa against Yoshiko, and that's probably not gonna happen. So, you know, you gotta you gotta keep the heat on you know on Mayu against Yoshiko. So, like it's it's kind of a double edged sword bringing Akasakawa possibly into this into this program. Yeah, it's I don't know how much you want to like shine a light on that. It's such an ugly incident that I don't think it paints the promotion in a great light either by putting such a spotlight on that. Like it, it feels very, um, it, it just feels very exploitive too. Well, I also don't think Yoshiko really wants to visit that. I think she, it took her a long time maybe to like, I think she does play up to it a little bit with her character of being a bully, but I do think it took her a while to finally, you know, get people to see her beyond that incident. So we'll see if she would be willing to like revisit that. What do you think is the, is the ceiling for the show at, at Budokan Hall for for stardom? Like even, you know, with a, a limited capacity, like what are you expecting for the show in March that will be their biggest in their history? I think it'll probably sell out because I I have a lot of faith that stardom's going to load up this show, John. I really think they're going to get as many like stars in the Joshi world to appear at, at Budokan, like in matches. Um, I, I think they'll probably try to get some kind of involvement, like probably like video messages from people like Kairi Sane and, and Io Shirai. Like, definitely not, they're not going to show up and they're definitely not going to have matches on the show. But I can see, like, you know, oh, we're going to have special VTR messages from, from these two stars. And, you know, they, they still have people up there who, who would, you know, who would draw money with, you know, the right report. Like, but here's the thing, like with Julia. Julia is a wonder of stardom champion. Like, and I would argue the biggest star in the company right now. Like, um, and she probably has, the most improved as well last year. Definitely. Definitely. Like she has this really like, you know, stormy history with her former promotions, ice ribbon, the way she left that company. There's a lot of heat there. If you get like an ice ribbon wrestler, like one of their big stars, like either, um, Oh God, sorry. I'm having a brain fart. It's either Maya Yuhiki or, or, um, 
what's her? Oh, God, I forget her name. She's one of the people know who I'm talking about. Like right now, like some people are like, I'm trying to remember her name, John. But anyways, if you get one of those two, one of the two big stars from from Ice Ribbon in a match against Juliet, that'll help draw people into uh, this show. But I have, I, I think Stardom is probably one of the most consistently well booked promotions up and down the card. So I think it's going to sell out. That's my prediction. Uh, th- does it help or hurt doing the back to back nights at, at Budokan with New Japan doing their anniversary card? Um, I don't think it hurts because I think if you can do some, you know, cross promotion, um, people are going to be in the area. I guess it's like, oh, I can go see two shows. Like, I, I never think like, you know, piggybacking off of another show hurts, even if it's in the same building. I think there's probably going to be some cross promotion. Definitely. Like, and I, you're probably going to see some of the New Japan roster come in as guests, like, you know, I don't know, guest ring announcing or guest timekeeping. Who knows? Yeah, I, I, I'm interested to see if you do see any of that. So even even doing like the back to back nights, doing more of those experiments, because I think it does help uh, depending on where it is like this. This is a Wednesday, Thursday. I don't know if these dates are significant. Are they th- th- these aren't holidays or anything? They're just regular weeknights. Uh, top of my head, I, I think so. Yeah, they're just regular weeknights. But, you know, like it's it's like when they did the back to back, you know, nights for the G1 finals, you know, right. Like that new Japan, it, it didn't really hurt. Like one, maybe one night had a better attendance than the other, but they both did really well. I mean, they didn't lose any money. They made money. I think it'll be the same thing. Like I think Bushi road for me, like, I, I really think Bushi road is just waiting out whatever TV deal stardom has with whoever <laughs> that they can. Okay. We're going to put them on the network we're affiliated with. We can start having these, you know, matches at Wrestle Kingdom, we can finally show them on New Japan World in, in the future. Yeah, I think that most people would have loved to have seen the the dark matches on, on the second night. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll trade you the four-way and give us the two stardom matches. And I got to think that they look at like, um, you know, like uh, Wrestle Universe, the DDT's, you know, streaming service that they share with Pro Wrestling Noah and with TJPW that, you know, Bushiro was like thinking, if we have one you know, if we have one and we charge a bit more, then we can get rid of Stardom World and just put everything on New Japan World and just maybe rebrand it to Bushi Fight Road or something. Who knows? But uh, and then just, you know, just charge more for a service that includes, you know, a two, two like really popular promotions, John. The last promotion will uh, will stop in Big Japan. Uh, what is going on with, with with Big Japan in the near future, and what is the state of the the light tube situation? Um, I think they're doing okay. I haven't heard anything about them, you know, asking the fans to please donate some light tubes or or barbed wire or um, you know like mouse traps or, or things like that that they normally like to use in their death matches. I think they're pretty good on the shattering glass that's going to get embedded into people's backs. So a okay on that front, John. Like. Um, uh, they just got a new Yasufumi Nakanoe became the the strong champion, which I'm excited about. I think this guy's got a lot of upside to him. But um, you know, for me, the the big draw of Big Japan is the astronauts, John. They're the current Big Japan Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champions, and and they're gonna have like a title defense against uh, another great Big Japan team called of uh, Kazumi Kakuda and Ryuichi Kawakami. These guys have been teaming up for quite a while now, and like. That's going to be on their January 31st show in Aichi. Oh, like, I'm very excited, John. Another another excellent match from the astronauts and another match I'm going to send a link to you for and hopefully you'll watch actually watch it this time. I will I will catch up on the astronaut stuff. I have been watching a lot of other uh, various Japanese promotions, but I will watch some astronauts uh, tag action over the next month and I will report back to you my my thoughts. Um, John, like I know I know like once you get on the Takuya Nomura train, you're going to you're going to be like I got to see more of this guy. All right, I will I will definitely check that out. Also, uh the Giant Baba Memorial card. Uh I know you've seen the lineup. It's uh quickly. We won't go through everything here, but the main event is listed as a uh, Mudo who by this point when, when's this taking place? This is on February February 4th, so it'll be before the Budokan show. So we won't have potential GHC champion Keiji Muto, but it'll be teaming with Triple Crown champion Suwama and Satoshi Kojima against Kaz Hayashi, Masayuki Kono, and X. Where's Kendo Miyahara? 
I, I I can't believe that he's X because like what would be the point of that? Like you should have Kido Bihara in this match. Like it's Mudo teaming with his two proteges, one Suwama and one is you know Satoshi Kojima. Um, like and then Kaz Hayashi with I, why the fuck did they put Masuki Kano? That guy fucking sucks. Um, he's not even a star, John. Like you know, like it should be Kaz. It should be maybe Shuji Kondo. Get him from Drag, borrow him from Dragon Gate, and it should be Kento Miyahara. Like. You know, or, or get Gio Go Shizaki or something. I don't know. Like, he used to be a Triple Crown champion. I don't know, John. They've got five matches listed. Plus, uh, they're going to air a giant Baba Stan Hansen match in the middle. So you can go to an arena to watch a match on tape. There you go, John. It's it's COVID times. It's it's hard to get people to come over. Like, they can't fly in Abdul the Butcher, you know, or Dory Funk Jr. Well, we talked about this the other day. It's... The idea of doing a show like this in this current pandemic where you are taking various locker rooms and mixing them on a show, I don't know if that's the wisest idea because, yes, you may have uh, some companies that are testing but certainly others that are not. And is this the best time to be doing this kind of show? Well, no. I'll be honest. No. I – I'll be surprised if it actually goes through, and I'll be surprised if there's a lot of people who actually go to this show, John. I'll watch it, but, I mean, on paper, it's it's a very weak card, especially compared to the last one they did with, like, you know, Tanahashi and, and K- Kento Mirahara in the same match, you know? Like, you know, it was with Tanahashi and Daisuke Sekimoto taking on the team of Kento Mirahara and uh, Yoshitatsu, but, you know, by the way, worst dressed of 2020, Yoshitatsu. Holy shit, he looked terrible last year. Um, but, yeah, like that. Yeah, Masekimoto and Tanahashi, first of all, they're teaming, and Tanahashi versus Kento Miyahara. Oh my God. But do they have the equivalent of that this year? No. It's it's kind of sad, John. Well, what's not sad is getting to uh, hook up with you, WH, uh, once again here on Post Pro Res. And, you know, sometimes we, we have like a loose idea of when we're going to come back. I think that it's, it's almost exactly a month. I think we should come back. Uh, on either February 12th or 13th, and we'll do a review of the Noah Budokan Hall show. Oh, that sounds awesome to me, John. That's a month from now, and we'll, we'll talk about uh, new GHC champion uh, Keiji Muto. So I was definitely planning to watch this show, and it times out perfectly for us to do our next show. And, and we'll we'll have watched all five of that eight-man tag from New Japan. <laughs> That's right. So everyone, here's our homework, okay? We're going to watch the NOAA uh, Destination 2021 card. We're going to rank the, the five <laughs> eight-man tags, which by match three, I think I will be regretting. And I'm going to watch uh, some Astro over the next month uh and wh um you can uh maybe maybe check out whatever is going on with the fiend bray wyatt uh hey you know i threatened to like come do like um, a main roster review with you guys like but you know what way says to me controversy equals cash so you know like if you know let me know i would rather honestly do a smackdown thing because i think i'd probably enjoy it it's only two hours there'd be less guilt on us having you watch two hours than three i think three you'd you'd get angry by probably hour or two and it and you then you'd still have another hour left if it's a pay-per-view i i'm 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 all for it if it's raw (laughs) i don't know about that but you know the 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 big draw is john like you should maybe talk to the people at fight tv about this is like when when we're all vaccinated and it's safe to meet in person we should do like a live streaming on fight TV of me watching, you know, you know, raw at your house with you. Oh my goodness. I, I, I don't know if they'd be ready, but the buys would just be through the roof. WH. I think we would break the model. Uh, and, and, we'll, and I'll bring sandwiches. I will bring some corned beef or like some, you know, Montreal smoke, you know, smoked meat sandwiches. And we'll, we'll, these people will like enjoy that. Well, I look forward to it. It uh, should be a fun show next month, uh, so everyone can go check that out as well. We have Post Pro Res merchandise up at store.postwrestling.com. Uh, two, I would say, tremendous shirts, but, I mean, the fashionista is WH Park, and you give your thumbs up to these shirts. I mean, well, I, I, I had some input in how they were designed, John, so yes, very, very much so. Hey, th- you don't have to include that. Just say, yeah, they, lo- they look fantastic. Uh, so go check those out at store.postwrestling.com. You can find WH Park all the time, WH Park and the number nine on Twitter. The man does not sugarcoat anything. So you know what? You give him a follow. That is, that is you approving of that feed coming in, and you will get the, the unvarnished truth from WH Park. 
But just my opinion. I don't know if it's the truth, but it's just my the unvarnished opinion. I, opinion. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know what? Like, there are things that make me happy. I talk about those. There are things that make me angry. I also talk about those. But I, I have toned down a, a little bit, John, in in my uh, in my Twitter age here. So uh, I, I just think I need to calm down for my for sake of my own blood pressure sometimes. So like, I don't get so much angry about so many things. But there are people out there who just rile me up, and I just go after them. Any uh, any podcast appearances in the near future? You have done the the media blitz over the last month. I I, I recorded something for uh, for Benno. I think they're doing a at the Grapple Spotlight. They're doing a, their their best of show. So I, I contributed like my opinions on what I thought were the best matches for for me over the last year. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, I, we just you know we just aired the latest edition of the Long and Winding Roller Road with Ed from Pod Van Dam, which I was talking about a great match between Mitsuhara Masawa and Jun Akiyama from 2000. Uh, I have an interview coming up. We'll we'll maybe we won't talk about that. Just it hasn't been recorded yet, but. I got an interview coming up with an author about a book that I, I really enjoyed. So we'll, when that comes up, we'll, we'll announce it. But, and then like I'm, I'm scheduled to record with one, you know, Dylan Fox over from the Eastern layer. And we're going to do a retrospective, John, that's going to debut next, next month. It's going to be a retrospective about Toshiaki Kawada, dangerous Ooh, K himself. I love it. Okay. Well, look, look out for that uh, in your podcast feed. And yes, the long and winding Royal road, you can catch it. Uh, every month here at postwrestling.com, the latest one, uh, covering the February 27th, 2000 match between Mitsuhara Misawa and Jun Akiyama. So go give I'm, that a listen. I'm pretty sure I brought that to O'Grady's and I'm pretty sure you watched it at O'Grady's. I think you're right. I, I have definitely seen that match and that is probably the source, uh, that being WH Park, uh, for that match. So that's it, everyone. We're going to wrap things up. Thank you for listening and we'll be back next month to talk about Do Not Pass Go. Keiji Muto.